What's up? This is Kevin. I just want to share some things on my heart really quick uh, with born-again believers in Jesus Christ and just everybody in general. Uh, I feel like a provoking in my spirit. And this isn't like some religious video and all that. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to avoid religion in this video and, and just get real and get specific and just be honest. And like me personally, like I'm disgusted with my own flesh. Like when I read the Bible and I see Apostle Paul and his devotion to Christ and how he was just so sold out for God and like he just lived his entire life just consecrated unto the Father, like just being rejected and persecuted and afflicted and preached the gospel everywhere he went amid amongst much opposition and, and being beaten and thrown in prison and just the passion that he had for Christ and that he could say the love of Christ compels me. You know, when I read that, it just convicts me, you know, because it's like a light. And it's like Jesus. Jesus was a light. You know, all the religious men of his day, people esteemed them highly like they were somebody special, like they were really men of God. But when Jesus came, he was the real deal. And he exposed all of the snakes, all the serpents in, in sheep's clothing. And that's why they hated him, because they were jealous of him. Because him being the light, Jesus even said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will no longer walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He exposed the hypocrisy of the religious men of his day who acted like they were men of God, but they were not because their heart was not sincere. And when I see that, you know, it just, it just convicts me because we're in the last times. We're in the end times. And this isn't a negative video. This is just a, a video of reality. You know, like Christianity is not about going to church once a week, you know, and never preaching the gospel. It doesn't matter if you're a preacher. Paul said the love of Christ compels me. If the love of God is in you, you can't possibly watch other people go to hell, even strangers. You, it, you can't. It can't not bother you. You know, if you spend any amount of time fellowshipping with God, the love of God just begins to well in you and you begin to your heart begins to get broken for people. You begin to to just weep before God and to just to start pushing food away and fasting and 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 spending time and taking taking extra time to spend time with God and, and just, you know, speaking to people and telling them the truth. And like me personally with my walk, like I'm disgusted with my flesh. And I just want to share this video. I'm sick. I'm disgusted with being a part of lukewarm Christianity and I'm not I'm not aiming this video at anybody else. I'm speaking specifically about myself. I'm holding myself accountable. And I want to be on fire for Jesus. You know, no compromise. No living in the world, acting like the world, being in the world, never preaching, teaching, sharing the love of Christ, shrinking away from spreading the gospel. You know, fitting in with the world and letting people go to hell rather than being radically different. And I feel like God is calling me personally and, and others to be radical disciples. And radical doesn't, I'm not speaking of radical in a negative sense. I'm speaking of radical in the sense of love. And man, I just want to share with you, man, that, that God has made a way, you know, because all this talking is good, but it ain't about what you say. It's about what you do. And it ain't about what you know, it's about what you do with what you know. And people read the Bible like like it's a class in college or something. Like what you know. The only reason you should read the Bible is to get to know the Father and to do what the Word of God says to do. When it says preach, speak the Word of God, to go do that. When it says go preach the gospel to all creation, it's simple. You do what the Word of God says. But anyways, there's a way directly into God. It's a path, and I'm just telling you right now, before the Father, I'm not swearing on him because the word says don't swear on him. I'm telling you right now, man, straight up, there is a way directly in to the power of God. More importantly, directly into knowing Jesus, okay? And, and the early disciples knew of this path, and they were on it. And that's why they operated in the gifts of the Spirit, and they cast out devils, and they lay hands on the sick, and they recovered. And we can do all these things, too. See, the church, the Christian church, is missing a vital part of what them original first century disciples had. And uh, these keys are keys of fellowship, 
I'm telling you right now, these five keys will change your life. One, you must be born again and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you're not saved, you can be saved right now. It's a simple prayer. Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins because you love me. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Holy Spirit, come into me right now and fill me right now with your Holy Spirit. Give me a prayer language. Another thing is getting filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. I'm going to set something straight right here. The Bible clearly shows you in the Word of God. I have another video on it about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. There's scripture all throughout the New Testament about praying in tongues and the gifts of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues and it being a prayer language for edification and transformation that will completely change your life. And Christians are letting religion rob them of truth. You're literally letting the devil just slap you in the mouth and deceive you. Don't be deceived by the devil. The, the Satan's job is to deceive you. I don't let me let me just say it straight up. I don't care what your pastor says about praying in tongues. And I'm I'm in love right now. I'm telling you what the Bible says, okay? So let me tell you something. If your pastor says one thing, but I can show you in the Bible another thing, not building a doctrine out of scriptures, pulling them out of context, but showing the, the scriptures in context all throughout the New Testament, how are you going to disobey God's word and still go with your pastor or still go with a religion or a denomination or this or that or the other? Check your heart. And I'm telling you in love, you see, because whether you pray in tongues it doesn't matter. It's not about praying in tongues. It's about getting as close to Jesus as we can be. And praying in tongues. The Bible says, He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. In his spirit, he speaks divine mysteries, though his mind is unfruitful. That particular scripture is speaking of the prayer language of tongues that you can pray in and you're not speaking to men you're speaking to God your mind doesn't understand but in your spirit you're speaking divine mysteries that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that's in the Bible that's in the Bible so unless you're walking by 10 wheelchairs and all 10 wheelchairs are getting up and the kids are getting healed and you're walking in that kind of authority power and biblical faith you're missing something we're all missing something and it's in the word you see, the flesh is in the way. Praying in tongues has changed my life completely. You know, and, and spiritual things no, make no sense to the carnal mind. The Bible tells us that too. But listen, it doesn't have to make sense. Okay? If the word of God says it, it's true. God is so big. Look at the stars in the sky. Look at the universe. You understand? He's not limited to our, our little earthly mindedness. Praying in tongues. You can pray in tongues 12 hours a day, 4 hours a day, 2 hours a day, 10 hours a day, easily. You can pray in tongues all day easily, at work, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, okay? And it's going to build you up on your most holy faith. The Holy Spirit knows how to pray. We do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes on our behalf with groanings too deep for words. He knows the plan of God. He intercedes for us according to the will of God. And then we know all things work together for good, for those who love God who are called according to his purpose. Those scriptures all tied in together. He's speaking of the, the Holy Spirit's ministry. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to conform you to the image of Jesus Christ. So you walk in power, you lay hands on the sick and they recover. So the little crippled kids that have never walked can walk because Jesus paid the price on the cross to set them free. Don't sit there and play church when you're not walking and, and doing what Jesus said to do. It's okay to do, do what you can with what you have now, but don't set up a tent and stay in this place of no power. Okay? And, oh, wow, you know, one miracle happens once a month or whatever hallelujah praise god for that miracle listen there's more the only thing between you and revival in your own life is your flesh fasting puts the death to flesh you can fast every other day if you want to do the 40-day fast you don't have to do the 40-day fast straight up you can fast one day eat one day fast one day eat one day fast one day eat one day for, for 80 days and you have done a 40-day fast it's going to accomplish the same thing that a 40-day fast straight up would accomplish. It's a series fast, and it's going to be a lot easier. So there's no excuse. You know, fasting is powerful. It puts to death the flesh, period. It's biblical. It's in the Bible. It is in the 
Bible. Jesus himself spoke about fasting. Why do Christians not fast? Because we live in the flesh. Okay, they, we live in this carnal earthly nature. Where, and it's, it's, I'm sick, I'm disgusted, I'm tired with myself, not you, not the body. I'm tired with me. Okay? It's not acceptable. This worship is not acceptable. This half-hearted devotion is not acceptable. Not fasting is not acceptable. I'm not talking about works. I believe in one work, the work of the cross of Jesus Christ. I believe we're saved by grace through faith, not of works so that no man may boast. But I know that there is a way to walk directly all the way into God. And it's through fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. And it's not work. I love fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. So there's two keys, praying in tongues and fasting. Another key is private worship. It's simply entering the Holy of Holies and just telling them, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you, God. I give you all of my heart, Jesus. I surrender my heart, Lord. I love you so much. I love you more than anyone. I love you more than anything, Jesus. I love you. I love you. Have all of me, Jesus. Just pouring your heart out to him personally. Pouring your heart out to him personally is private worship. That completely changes you. Everything changes. Your love, it's the love gift. When you worship the Father, the presence of God is just so powerful and it just fills you. And the love of God will just erupt inside of you and you'll just be weeping. And the love of God will change you and you'll start caring about people more. And you won't be able to hold on forgiveness in your heart. It's so powerful. But nobody's teaching this. But it's okay because I'm telling you right now. Now you know. Meditating the Word of God, getting an accurate translation of the Bible, which there's very few, and there's a lot of inaccurate. There's interpretations. Don't read interpretations. It's not the. It's not accurate. Read a translation, something that is derived or from the original manuscripts. I read NASB. If you you know read King James, whatever you want to read, do your research and find out what the most accurate version is. I like NASB, it's very accurate, it's awesome. I read it, I meditate it, it's great. Read the Word of God, primarily the New Testament, okay? I'm not against the Old Testament, but you need to know the covenant that you're in. And the New Testament is one third the length of the Old Testament. So read Matthew through Revelations all the way through. I'm surprised at how many Christians have never even read the New Testament one time. And like I said, this isn't about that, this is about me. I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted with my lukewarmness. I'm disgusted with, with not being completely on fire and consumed by Jesus Christ. I'm disgusted. We're not spending 12-hour days every day in fellowship with the Father. Plus, I'm disgusted, you know, not fasting more and worshiping and preaching and teaching and all these things. I'm disgusted. Read the Word of God. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The Word of God is, the, is your foundation. You have to read the Word of God. Okay, you have to read the Word of God and compromise the Word of God for nothing and nobody. The Word is the truth whether you believe it or not. Okay, if you don't agree with it, that's something in you. The Word is truth. The Word will open the eyes of your heart and will re reveal to you the truth of who God is. It will give you instructions in life. It'll teach you what's right. It'll teach you what's wrong. And then it's our job to let the Holy Spirit, to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, to get us in line with the Word, not to change the Word. If the Word says it's sin, my friend, it is sin. If the Word says it's wrong, it is wrong. It doesn't matter if it feels good. It doesn't matter if everybody else is doing it. It doesn't matter if everybody in your church is doing it. It doesn't matter. What the Word says is truth. And another key, is confessing scripture. Walk the floor and just declare scriptures over your life. Get the word in you. Meditate the word day and night. Pr check this out. You start fasting, worshiping, praying in tongues, meditating the word, walking the floor, declaring and decreeing scripture and releasing your faith. You're going to become a mighty devil stomping disciple of Jesus Christ that is going to change the world and reap an eternal harvest. Period. It's a process. We got to put the flesh to death. It's just all these keys do something different. 
You know, and when you believe in your heart and you speak with your mouth, you release your faith. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you believe it in your heart. You're walking the floor. Your physiology, your physiology is in line with the word. You're believing. You're confessing. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I've been set free. I've been delivered. I'm healed. I walk in the fullness of the spirit of God. I lay hands on the sick and they recover. And you start speaking these scriptures. The greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm crucified with the I'm crucified with Christ. I'm dead to the world, alive to God. My flesh has no dominion over me. I reign in life through Christ Jesus. I'm more than a conqueror through him who loved me. You just start speaking these scriptures, and then before you know it, you start becoming your confession. So that's really it. Uh the basics, man. It's just the basics, but man, these are the end times. The world is ending. Listen, there's the Bible says in Matthew 24, there's going to be an end time war, an end time turmoil that had, the world has never seen before. It's worse than anything that has ever happened on this planet. And I'm, you know, I'm just telling you, it's here. The time is here. I mean, it could be any day. We are in the time. The season is here. The Bible tells us signs that we'll see that will tell us that the end is here and all the signs are being confirmed right now every sign every sign in the bible so it's written it's going to be whether you like it or not if you're a man i'm telling you right now man up straight up if you're a family if you have a family if you have friends even if you don't if you have nothing and you have nobody man man up these are i'm telling you right now as a born again believer and a follower of christ these are the end times these are the last days the worst turmoil ever is about to happen and our relationship with Jesus Christ needs to be strong so that when this happens, we can be a vessel for God's glory and we can manifest the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. God bless. Say a quick prayer for you real quick. Father, I just pray for whoever's watching. Holy Spirit, I pray that you just breathe on them and that you just fill them to overflowing. If they're not saved, Lord, I pray that they get saved now, Jesus. If they're not filled, God, I pray that they get filled now. Right now where they're at, Lord, I thank you that you save their soul and that you fill them with the Holy Spirit, God. And right now, I thank you for giving them the prayer language of praying in tongues, Jesus. So the Holy Spirit can help them grow in you and become all that you desire for them to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We just worship you. Thank you for their prayer language, God. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Hallelujah. And if you're born again, if you're not born again, get born again. Ask Jesus to be your Savior. And right after that, you can receive the Holy Spirit. You don't have to be good enough. You don't have to earn Him. He's a free gift for everybody despite what you've been taught. The Holy Spirit is for every single believer, not just a select few who God chooses. It is the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is for everybody. The gifts are as the Spirit of God wills, but the actual Holy Spirit himself is for every born-again believer, and the prayer language comes with the Holy Spirit. So if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, you can receive him right now, and all you got to do is say, Jesus, baptize me right now with the Holy Spirit. I believe in faith. I receive the ability to pray in tongues right now. And then all you got to do is just start speaking. Because as soon as you say that prayer, the Holy Spirit's going to come. And he's going to give you baby syllables. He's going to give you a, a language that you don't understand with your mind. But you have to speak it out. The Holy Spirit's not going to make you speak. If you just open your mouth in faith, the Holy Spirit is going to fill your mouth. And just do it. And whatever syllables come, just speak it out. Give sound to the words. And it'll start off like baby talk. And then the more you do it, the Holy Spirit will begin flowing. And that's your new prayer language. All you got to do is pray in this language. Read the book by Dave Roberson, The Walk of the Spirit, The Walk of Power, The Vital Role of Praying in Tongues. It is for free on his website. So God bless. Love Jesus with all your heart. Give him everything you got. And that's it, man. We've been reaping eternal harvest. God bless.